Welcome back to Podcast 4 of 2019. I'm your host, Kiev O'Neill. You can tweet me at the Public Dog, and you can tweet us at the Odds Breakers. This episode is being sponsored by uwager.eu for a 50% sign up bonus. Please visit uwager and use the promo code The Odds Breakers. If you'd like to help us out with our costs and support the podcast, we would love to help you out. Please visit theodsbreakers.com and become a member for twelve ninety nine a month. You can have access to all of our picks and premium picks before the line moves. Some capper information uh, from our other cappers that come on the show. Some good free pick sites. And if for $2 or more, you can become a patron subscriber and support the podcast Get the podcast early at times. If nothing else, please visit theazbreakers.com and become a free Picks Newsletter subscriber. We are definitely off our worst week in uh, over a year here. We had a really bad weekend. You know, it's uh, heard from some people about that. You definitely hear from more people when you send out a bunch of picks that uh, didn't win <laughs> than when you send out picks that do win uh, a couple we were on a hell of a good streak and you know Clemson money line and side hit and everything but you know once you have that bad weekend it's tough what do you do when that happens I let it go and I said to myself this is the business we've chosen <laughs> that's right from the Godfather. This is the business we've chosen. You got to take the ups and downs and have proper bankroll management. It can be like a roller coaster at times. And bankroll management means that you should not be making large bets and screw it all up in a weekend when it should be spread out through the year. You know, basically, we had our ups and downs in college football, had about 300 some bets. And we were up 20 units. You know, bankroll management, I'm going to quick go over that. If you have a million dollars in your bankroll, kiss it goodbye. You don't need it for anything else. This is for your fun, recreational sports betting. Your unit size should be $10,000. If you have $100,000 for your bankroll, then your unit size should be $1,000. If you have... $10,000 $10,000 for your bankroll, your unit size should be $100. And if you have $1,000 for your bankroll, your unit size should be $10. If you have $100 for your bankroll, your unit size should be $1. I mean, that's that's how to feel better about the ups and downs in this business. Even the best sports bettors are around 56, 57% from an aggregate over time. And if you hear people saying over 60 for life or anything like that, run the other direction. Too much variance in this stuff. But we love sports. We watch them. We want to make every game interesting. So let's make this fun. Before I get into the NFL recap, anyone else Watch that Syracuse Duke game with the Syracuse win. <laughs> that was a uh, one game that we got right on Monday. Um, you know, it, it was it was pretty awesome. Um, it was the spread went from sixteen and a half all the way up to eighteen and a half. And if you ask us, did we sprinkle that money line, that juicy money line that was around probably plus six hundred? Hell no, man. After a tough weekend of sports, but it wasn't sprinkling shit. But uh, obviously, that's that was a mistake because no matter 
how bad or good the streaks you're on, you should still stick to your principles. I made the mistake by not sprinkling that, but Jesus, if you look at that, you figure Duke is still going to win this game at home. But wow, Syracuse came off a really bad game before of a shooting percentage, so it was more of a system play, and uh, they ended up winning the game, so what the hell. Pretty awesome game. Let's recap the NFL a little bit here. You know, I got to tell you, the games were not close for the most case. Uh, the, the the Eagles game was close against the Saints, obviously. But you certainly saw that home field advantage was a little bit more than three points this last weekend, whether it be the crowd noise, you can attest it to the, you know, recency of playing on your home field and just you know playing there eight games throughout the year you can attest it to the officials being a little bit more on your side it's because officials do that on home fields Um, sometimes they don't call it equally I actually thought that's most of the games minus the Saints game was wasn't called equally, but you know the t- the team still would have lost. The Chargers lost by a lot anyway. They're still going to lose by a lot. The Colts would have lost by a little bit less. Speaking of that Colts game, I didn't see one holding penalty on Kansas City. And one thing I did see was, and for all you teaser betters such as myself, was the roughing the kicker penalty that ruined everyone's teaser out there. If the guy's laying face flat on the ground and the kicker flies five years in the air and purposely tries to land on him to kind of look like something happened and they throw a penalty there, you know that there is something wrong. (laughs) I mean, how can you get a penalty lying flat on your face? Only in the NFL, right? But uh, yeah, that screwed up some teasers for many people. I'm thinking the Colts was and the Chargers were pretty highly teased last weekend. Um, the Chargers, though, they just, uh, I'll get into this a little bit more when I'm handicapping the this, the Patriots game, but I'll tell you that they did exactly what we said they shouldn't do. Um, they played the zone. They didn't play man press and blitz Brady. And uh, like I said, Brady picks apart zones like like nothing you know, the game got away from the Chargers. It was over by halftime. Um, you have to at least get to Brady and hit him because he's going to beat you anyway. At least when you play man press, um, he's got to be a little bit more timed and he's got to get the ball out of his hands a little quicker if he's getting blitzed. Plus, you can stop the run when you're charging the line a little bit better. You know, you got to what the only thing you watch out is for those passes to James White when that happens. So you, you, you might have to sacrifice. Uh, a, a guy to spy him a little bit. But, um, yeah, Lynn and the Chargers failed. Uh, the Eagles versus the Rams, I got to tell you, the, that game really scared a lot of people, uh, a lot of Saints fans there, a lot of people like me that had 19-1 for the Saints to win it all. Eagles jumped them, scored twice, bre- breezed through that interception on the first play of the game. Uh, you know, I think it was just the whole case of the uh, I haven't played in a few weeks type deal. And uh, they also really didn't play when they played Carolina that last game, did they? You know, they uh, uh, put a bunch of backups in and uh, they came out rusty. That's the danger of resting your guys. You can come out rusty and almost blow your next playoff game when you are the home field guy. You know, when you when you have the best record in the league. So definitely coaches need to be careful with that and we saw that rust but you know they they ended up uh obviously taking care of business the rams ran all over the eagles or sorry the uh cowboys it is it all happened in the first half really the cowboys actually kind of put up a fight in the second half a little bit and inched back a little but you know i i, I never seen the cowboys run defense so bad i don't know what happened there I think there's they're kind of caught on the back of their heels a little bit. Um, they overthought it. Uh, Sean McVay, obviously, he's a genius, and um, he, his plays just seem to fit in every single situation. 
He used C.J. Anderson to A, keep Gurley ha- uh, healthy. You know, don't don't want to pound him too hard. And B, he's a very capable running back and surprised the hell out of uh, Dallas there. But, um, you know, you just heard Jerry Jones saying uh, that his coach is uh, uh, would be would be recruited by many other teams if he let him go. <laughs> so I don't. So for, for Cowboy fans, it looks like you're going to be stuck with Garrett for uh, for quite some for some time now. If Dak can move it to the next level, and that defense can hold up, maybe the players can be good enough to win without the influence of a bad coach. But I don't know. You you saw it's uh, you know they, they got out coached for sure that first half, and uh, yeah they 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 just kind of lost it in the up front. They should have watched, rewatched that Bears Rams game. That's what they should have done. But, you know, the Cowboys won a playoff game, so I guess you can call that a moral victory, right? More than the Bears did. All right. So, let's move in to our NFL picks. So, the Rams versus the New Orleans Saints. You know, this... Actually, all these games are awesome. The four best offenses are still in the playoffs. No matter who wins these two games, you're going to have a great Super Bowl. You know, you really are. So, I'm excited to watch these games. It's going to be, you know, I think it's going to be more defense than people think. You know, everyone looks at those past scores of both games going over 80 points. But, um... Let's let's dive into that a little bit. Start with the Rams versus the Saints. The Saints are laying three and a half points. The over under is around 57, 56, 57 ish. And I'll tell you this: a lot of people are gun shy about the overs because I think the unders were three and one last week. So we did see this show before. Some people said that this was uh, the best game they've ever seen last year. You know, um, I've heard that many times, probably from the same people. This is the best game I've ever seen. But uh, um, I beg to differ a little bit. The offense is uh, was absolutely crazy. That these games, um, the Saints kind of jumped them, jumped the Rams, the, 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 then just kept coasting the whole way. The Rams did kind of catch up in the second half a little bit, but the Saints pulled away. The Saints won 45 to 35. So maybe I, I maybe this was the best game of the regular season. I don't know. It was exciting. Um, don't forget that uh, uh, that old Patriots-Chiefs game we saw earlier this year uh, in uh, Foxborough. So first of all, there's no coaching mishmatch here. Both Sean Payton and Sean McVay are top five in the league right now, right? I, I didn't used to have a lot of respect for Sean Payton. I don't know why. Maybe it was that whole... Uh, paying the players to uh, Bounty Gate or whatever the hell, but I guess everyone does that. So why, why, I, maybe I just don't like his face. <laughs> I'm not sure, but uh, th- it doesn't matter. I was wrong about you know him. I, he's lasted a lot longer than I thought, and I think he's actually a really good coach. And he kind of he's kind of that hybrid coach. He's he's a players guy, yet he's kind of a tough guy too. He he gets to him, you know. He he knows when to say what it seems he, he he seems to motivate this team and it sure doesn't uh, hurt to have a guy like drew Brees who's been playing with a chip on his shoulder his whole year his whole life sean mcveigh you know i mean young coach youngest in the league and um just killing it right now lots of great plays a lot of people are looking at his coaching tree um the packers just hired uh, their coach matt lafleur who was under sean mcveigh for a little while you know it's a that's what people do. So the bad thing for the Saints this game is that they just lost Sheldon Rankins, right? A big defensive tackle with a torn Achilles tendon. He was a huge run plugger, you know, on the line. He's going to be especially missed against this Rams third best run game in the NFL. That's what I think. But David Oniam, I, th- I, I think I believe him Oniamata. I think that's how to say it. I've only heard it a few different times. He's going to have to step up. He's kind of the filling guy for the Saints. And uh, he finished the game against the Eagles, and he did well. But can you play a whole game 
Are you going to be able to rotate other guys in? That That's a good question. Now, if you look at the Rams, 